to results of justification. And while the words are a little bit different in each version, the core message is the same throughout. Christ died for us. And because of that, we are made whole. And because of that, we have peace. And I have to be honest, I never really thought about the peace part of it before. When I think of sacrifice that Jesus made, I think of forgiveness and love. But after reading this scripture, I want to delve into this whole idea of peace a little bit more. I mean, I love the idea of it, and there are times when I feel very much at peace. And when I do, I am focused on God. And it's in those times when I actually slow down enough to take in all that God has created. It's those times when I open my heart to Him. It's those times when I am quiet. But I have to admit that peaceful state of mind is only a small part of my day. And I would even say a small part of my week. But a couple things have happened to me this week that have definitely awakened me. We had our woman's book study on Monday, and we were talking about moving God's love from our head to our heart. And I always thought that my most prominent spiritual gift was my faith. So I always thought that my love for God was in my heart. But then I started hearing what other people were sharing, and I thought, maybe I need to do a better job of making sure that it's here. People were sharing their own experiences. One woman was talking about a transformation that she had when she invited God into her life, and she was able to make some changes. And another woman shared about a friend of hers who actually heard God tell her about a mission that he wanted her and her husband to carry out. I gotta tell you that lately I feel like I take two steps forward and five steps back, and that hopefulness that I feel, it just gets squashed. So today's scripture really spoke to me. The NRSV version says, boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Suffering produces endurance. I'm sure that plenty of us sitting in this room are thinking, well, if that's the case, then I have got enough endurance. I'm good. <laughs> Some synonyms for endurance are tolerance and patience. Well, when I looked up the definition of patience, it said the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. And I think that's where it's difficult for us. When I think of patience, I think of waiting. But I realize that it's a lot more than that. It's about a reaction to our sufferings. And it's about inviting God into our mess and admitting that we are suffering. And it's about asking God to take those feelings of anger, and transform them into love and tolerance. And it's really about releasing it all to God. And I get so close. I'm 95% of the way there, and then I'm just hanging on to that last 5%. And when I'm not all in, well, I completely lose sight of what it is that God wants from me. I get in these modes of trying to please people on earth, trying to move with their adoration, and I'm totally missing getting God's praise. I've had two flat tires in two weeks. Al and I will often take a walk, and last week we went out to take our evening walk, and I noticed that the passenger side rear tire was halfway flat. And we were kind of debating, okay, should we go get it filled up at the station and then just kind of cross our fingers that it's inflated enough the next day to take it to the shop. And I said, I want to learn how to change it. So he started it, and then I was able to finish up. And this week, when I went out for my morning walk, the driver's side rear tire was halfway flat. And I thought to myself, I'm going to do this myself. You know, I've told you before that I'm the youngest of four, and I have real brothers, so I guess I always 
in my mind, tried to do the same things that they did, you know? And I think I haven't let that go. So, when I looked underneath, I noticed that the configuration is different on the driver's side than the passenger side. And I just couldn't figure out where to put the jack. Well, I decided on the spot, and I was doing fine, okay? I even got the tire off. But then I needed to jack that more to get the spare on. And I realized that I did not have the jack in the right spot, and it was starting to bend. And I'm like, well, this is not good at all. I need to get this thing off <laughs> before I create another problem that I didn't have before. And I just swallowed my pride, and I woke up out. And I'm so disappointed in myself. But I realized that my goal was all wrong. My intentions were fine. I wanted to try and accomplish something. And I wanted to try and do it without waking him up and without getting him involved. But my goal was for him to praise me. My goal was to impress him. And that's where I went wrong. And maybe we do this in our lives without even realizing it. But the truth is, I can't do everything myself. And when we think that we can get through this thing called life without God's help, that's when we really get into trouble. And that's when things kind of fall apart sometimes. I need to approach tasks feeling equipped because God enabled me. Don't worry, I'm not going to try to fix the brakes or, you know, roll build the airplanes or something like that. We do need to realize our strengths and our weaknesses, because we're not all gifted in the same way. And that's a good thing. I mean, if we had all doctors, but we didn't have any machinists, then who's going to make the medical equipment? And if we only had architects and no builders, then what would the point be, right? But we do have to stop beating ourselves up over the things we can't do, over the things that maybe we don't do so well, or maybe we don't even enjoy. You know, I talk about showing kindness to others, but it dawned on me that we need to be kind to ourselves as well. The scripture talks about being joyful and praising God during your troubles. And the question is, can we be joyful during hard times? But the answer is absolutely yes. Because when all we do is concentrate on the things that aren't working out, then it's just this cycle that just doesn't end. And we fill our hearts with fear and worry and hate. All the things that God wants us to renounce. He tells us, don't worry. Don't be afraid. Love one another. When something comes out of nowhere and knocks you down, sometimes it's hard to get back on your feet. And sometimes you think that you're kind of getting steady. And then this jab in the form of doubt or fear, just takes the right hook to you. And you feel like you're in a boxing match almost. And you just, just can't seem to get back up. And we start to blame everything that's going wrong on whoever or whatever caused us to get knocked down in the first place. And then it just expands. And suddenly all of our energy is going to hating one person or one situation. And we push God away, and we don't let anyone else in. And we just keep filling our bucket with scorn and hate and suffering. We need to do some serious unpacking when that happens. When we invite God into our presence, we develop that peace that we were talking about that surpasses all understanding. The scripture says when we develop patience, we are alert for whatever God will do next, never shortchanging us. Martin Luther struggled a lot with grace. And there was a time when he was going to confession several times a day. He'd get out and he'd go back in. <laughs> and he finally became liberated by this idea of undeserved merit by simply reading the scripture. And we need to do the same. Accept grace as the gift that it is. Know that you don't have to do anything earth-shattering or break any records in order to receive it. Ephesians says, by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not the result of works, so that no one may boast, but instead of trying to draw
jump, jump through every ring of fire. We just need to cut ourselves some slack. When you're not trying to outdo others and not trying to outdo yourself, you don't have to seek the praise or boast. Then you're going to enter the state of peace that will free your heart and be filled with love and acceptance and patience. And that is a wonderful, wonderful gift.